This is the kind of energy which can be a base for a whole spiritual revolution which can go through the country or through the world because Shiva himself sat there and they acquired this quality. Here it's ready, sitting there, all you have to do is look up and be receptive to it, that's all. When Adiyogi himself was in a state of distress, or maybe distress is not the word, when he was in a certain state of acrimony with himself, when he could not fulfill the promise that he kind of made to a devotee, because he got deceived by some other forces. He was disappointed and angry with himself, in a certain state of despondent. In that state, he came and sat here. Probably most of you know the story about why he became like this. So to put it very simply, a South Indian woman, South-South, the very tip of the subcontinent which is today, for a long time it's been known as Nagar Coil, which means the serpent temple. Today the very tip is known as the Kanyakumari, where the three oceans meet and merge. So really down south, a woman devotee expressed her love for him and said, she set a date for him. No, she was not having a date with him, she set a date for him <laughs> that by this day, by this day's sunrise, if you do not appear and marry me, I will shed my body. So, uh, when he looked at her, when he looked south and saw the intensity with which she was saying this, he knew that this is for good, I mean this is for real. That she is actually going to leave her body if he does not make it. So he started his journey from the upper regions of Himalayas down south. So he's just trying to meet the deadline, but there are any number of people who don't want him to marry a South Indian woman. So, they put various types of obstacles in his way, but he ignored all that and he came on. When he came very close to this place, when he was just twenty-two kilometers away, what they did was, they put up a huge heap of camphor and lit it far away. In the early morning, mist, when there is mist, every particle of water in the air acts like a magnifying glass and it just blew up in such a big way that it actually looked like a sunrise. Then they told him, sun has come up, she would have left her body anyway. What are you going there for? <coughs> he was just twenty-two kilometers away from that place. Then he saw the whole place being lit up by the sunrise, which was actually a camp for hell that they lit. He felt totally dejected with himself that he couldn't make it in time and he turned back. So that place today is known as the Suchindran. 
And he walked up this way, went up this mountain and sat there, despondent, angry, in a state of self-acrimony. He did not sit there in blissfully, he sat there very intense, angry, not with someone else, for his own failure. So because he sat here in that condition, which is rare, the place acquired a completely different kind of intensity, a completely different kind of quality about itself, and it bred a whole series of yogis who went to do sadhana there because Shiva himself sat there and they acquired this quality. They walked with the same rage and intensity, not rage about anybody, simply, simply angry, not about anything. So a whole series of yogis came from that. <clears throat> if you've seen the pictures of Sadhguru Sri Brahma, he looks like that. That Virappan <laughs> would look like a kindergarten child. Virappan would really look innocent and baby-faced. That's how fierce he looks, for no reason. He simply walked in anger all the time, not about anybody, extremely compassionate but just angry. So this was not the first one, the whole series of them like this, because they got their push from the energy at the peak of this mountain. And they acquired this. For them, for this series of yogis who came, for them, the only transmission that they would trust is that of the Adi yogi. They are not the kind to trust anything else. They are not the kind to trust any other human being on the planet. Only if it comes from him, it's real for them, otherwise it's not. So they grew in this, because here Adi Yogi sat in a certain state of fierceness, despondence and a kind of acrimonious condition within himself, the very peak acquired that quality, divine but in a different way. They became that kind. You don't know how much it's taken to culture this one, to civilize this one, to make it look… I know I still don't look civilized but I'm at least… if you don't see my face, I'm sounding civilized, haven't I? So, the energy, the intensity of what this mountain can transmit, what this speak can do to people is too phenomenal. If we have to generate this kind of energy, enormous amount of work has to be done, enormous. Here it's ready, sitting there. All you have to do is just look up and say, Shiva. All you have to do is look up and be receptive to it, that's all. When such a energy basis is available, this is the kind of energy which can be a base for a whole spiritual revolution which can go through the country or through the world. This is not an exhaustible kind, it's an inexhaustible kind. It's not something that will run out. It's something 
the more you draw, the more forceful it becomes. We would like this to happen to the whole world, but I'm thinking right now, you know, I'm getting old, so I'm thinking more modest these days. I'm thinking at least people who happen to be born in Tamil Nadu should not spend their life without ever being in touch with this energy. This must happen at least for the sixty-two million people. We don't want to leave out the country, but I feel if it happens to all of Tamil Nadu, Tamil people are very uh, effervescent people, I am sure they will make sure the rest of the country shakes with that energy too. If all of them get it, for me personally, the mountain is of great significance because <clears throat> my guru chose to leave his body there too. And uh, I've still not dared to step into that space. I know where it is, but I still don't have the temerity to step upon his grave. So I'm staying away from it for now. So, this is a mountain of a temple. If you have to create that kind of energy, what it takes is not simple. <coughs> it's not simple at all. It will be phenomenal work. So monumental, it's almost humanly impossible kind of work. But it's all done and kept ready, just in a natural form. If we don't make use of this, this would be very foolish, especially for the local population. It would be extremely stupid not to make use of this energy because this can transform everything that human being is. And we can breed more angry yogis who are wonderful beings, but who don't have to pretend to be kind and gentle and compassionate. They're simply the way they are. They're just like the wild. They're like a tiger in the forest or a tusker that tramples through everything, but whatever he does is still useful. <laughs>